Good morning. Happy Easter. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Hugh of Grenoble Parish. Our opening hymn is number 593, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 593.
Good morning. The readings for today's Mass are found on page 114 in the Missalette, 114. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Our sequence is found at page 601 in the hymnal. Let all Christians their voices raise. We will be singing the refrain and then all the voices, all the verses straight through and then ending with the refrain again. That's number 601.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloth, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. And he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today I have the the privilege of standing in the footsteps of St. Peter to proclaim uh, to you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, that Jesus, who was put to death by being hung, upon a tree, the tree of the cross, in a most shameful, painful death. This man, God has raised. On the third day, on Easter Sunday, and granted that he be visible not to all the people, at least not yet, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Peter, who proclaims that Jesus is risen and that he has seen the Lord glorified, alive, and now with those who believe in him, no longer through the senses, alone, but now with them, with us, in the gift of the Holy Spirit that we have received through our faith in Jesus, the faith of the church, and the waters of baptism, in which we were born again. And the old Adam, the old way of life, put to death, 
and the life of the new Adam, Christ, now rising up within us so that we are indeed born again, transformed and renewed by the life of God, the Holy Spirit, the love of God poured out into our hearts. Peter, who on the first Easter found himself in a locked room with the other apostles because they were afraid, they were bereft, and they had no idea what they were to do because they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. Even though the Lord in his earthly ministry told them many times, whoosh, went right over their heads. We understand that. So many times the, the words of the Lord his teaching goes right over our heads. He speaks to us, but we do not yet understand. Or perhaps we understand a bit, but still there is much that eludes us. So Peter in that locked room with the other disciples and the disciple whom Jesus loved. John, the Apostle John calls himself that uh, out of modesty. He does not want to mention his own name, but he, he boasts in the love that Jesus has for him. And that is our Christian boast. That's what we boast of. Christ loves us. How do I know that? He died for us on the cross. There's a knock on the door. It's Mary of Magdala, the Magdalene. One of the disciples who had accompanied the the apostles with Jesus during his earthly ministry who was rescued from seven demons who oppressed her through the power of Jesus and his love and now was a believer so they opened the door to Mary who herself did not understand and simply reported, they've taken the Lord's body from the tomb. We don't know where they put him. Some malefactor stole his body, no doubt to dishonor it, to desecrate it even leaving the, the burial claws that, that, that wrapped his body out of respect, even leaving them behind. It would seem another insult to the Lord, another blow to faith. And so Peter and the other disciple moved, perhaps by anger, perhaps out of a desire to do something, run to the tomb. And uh, John got there first because he could run faster. He didn't go into the tomb, but he he looked in and, and saw, indeed, you know, there were the burial cloths. But no Jesus. 
Then Peter arrived, and because he was the leader, Jesus had made him the leader of the apostles, of the disciples. He had the honor, as it were, of going into the tomb first. And he saw precisely what John saw standing outside the tomb. But here is where John surpasses Peter, at least for a time. He goes in to the tomb. And somehow being in that tomb and seeing perhaps even touching the burial cloths that were there and the, the cloth that was wrapped over Jesus' head rolled up in a separate place. You know, why would that happen? If somebody just wanted to rifle the tomb and dishonor the body, why would they be so careful as to roll up the, the, the cloth covering his head, put it in a separate place? It's curious. But then the Holy Spirit filled his heart with faith and understanding. He saw an empty tomb and he believed. Not that Jesus' body had been stolen, but that Jesus had conquered death. All of the wickedness of the world hurled against him had not defeated him, but he had defeated it. Of course, subsequently, and we'll hear this throughout the, 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 the masses of, of Easter week, and if you're able to come to daily mass, um, either here or elsewhere, I'd, it would be very fruitful for you. The readings are very beautiful. It's all of the accounts of the Lord's resurrection appearances. The Lord did appear in his glorified body to the apostles as, as a proof of that he was still alive. But we need to be careful to understand that because he appeared in his glorified body in a way that they did not recognize him. Although his glorified body did have still the impress of the wounds in his hands, in his feet, in his side that was still the same. No, even when Jesus appeared to the apostles and to Mary of Magdala after his resurrection, they still needed the Holy Spirit to help them to see him and to know that it was he, that Jesus was alive and with his disciples now in a new and even more powerful way today we are somewhat like John we we enter into the place where we believe the Lord is to be found. We've come to church. But what do we see? We see our offerings of bread and, and wine brought up to the altar and blessed. 
And then with the priest, we, we remember what the Lord said to us. Take and eat all of you. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink all of you. This is the cup, the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant promised by the prophets that is poured out for you and for many so that sins may be forgiven by the gift of the Spirit given to the sinner by which the sinner repents and is therefore able to receive that forgiveness purchased for us at the price of Jesus' blood. We see what appears to our senses after the consecration, after our remembering of what the Lord did for us, and, and he says, do this in memory of me, and that's what we're doing in obedience to his command. Someone who comes here is with us and, and has no faith, probably just scratches their head and says, well, that's, that's bread. That's wine. Why get so excited about it? I mean, yeah, I, I guess I could understand that you, you think maybe it's a, or they think maybe it's a symbol of Jesus. But then that doesn't explain why they bow before it. That doesn't explain why the priest genuflects before it. What's going on? Bread and wine? But we're like John. John saw an empty tomb. And he believed that Jesus was risen and alive. We see what looks like bread and wine, and we say, it is the Lord. He is risen, and yet he is still among us in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that, that opens our eyes in faith to the reality of our risen Lord's presence in our midst, to bless us, to feed us with himself so that the life of the spirit that we received in our baptism, a baptism of faith, may now grow within us and transform the old Adam with all his resentments and pride and fear and anger, covetousness and greed, to put that old Adam that wants to to hold us in shackles, to put him to death so that the new Adam, Christ, may live and grow in us and we may come to our full maturity in Christ and discover that we have become what God intended from the very beginning, pure vessels of God's love for one another for the whole world. St. Paul says to the Christian community in Colossae, and it's beautiful to hear his words on this Easter day. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, in other words, if then you have come to faith in Jesus and through that faith and the waters of baptism have received the Holy Spirit so that Christ lives in you and the Father lives in you and you've been raised to a new life in them, if then you were raised with Christ, now seek what is above. Seek God and the things of God. Seek the kingdom where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, seated in power. 
in the Father's house that will be our final and definitive home since we have no permanent home here. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth, St. Paul says. And the enemies of Christ and of the church have used that against us. Accusing Christians of not caring for the world, but thinking only about heaven and letting the world go to hell in a handbasket. But that isn't what Paul means when he says, think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For what is above has already come to dwell in our hearts. And that is where we find our strength. Our strength to do what? Not to ignore the earth, not to ignore our neighbors, but to confront the evils and injustices of this world all of human wants with the love that we have received from Christ who out of love died for us and has given us the Spirit in our baptism. That's what we have to give to the world, not our own feeble attempts to love, the way the old Adam feebly attempts to love, but now to love with the love that Christ has given us a love that we call charity. It's God's own life coursing through us and now abundantly radiating forth from us for the sake of the world. You have died, St. Paul said to the Colossians. You've died to the old Adam. Don't go back there. Don't think like the old Adam. Don't speak like the old Adam. Don't desire things as the old Adam desired them. Your life now is hidden with Christ in God, hidden under our human flesh that we, we share with everyone else. But hidden under this flesh is the life, the risen life of Jesus beating in our hearts. And as Jesus says, what is hidden cannot forever remain so because that life in Christ begins to be revealed in us by the charity that flows from our heart, the charity that meets others with mercy, with compassion, with kindness, and that confronts evil with the one spiritual weapon that can vanquish it once and for all, Jesus Christ and his love for us. When Christ, your life, appears at the end of time, then, indeed, you too will appear with him in glory because already you are living the life of glory now. So I want to end the homily in a, in a special way, if I may. I'm going to use my smartphone to help me. We call it a smartphone because it's smarter than we are, you know. Today in uh, Western Ukraine, the Greek Catholics are celebrating Easter with us. Next Sunday, uh, Orthodox uh, Ukrainians will be celebrating Easter. And the, diff the reason it's, it's not the same day is because different calendars that, that were adopted. But it's the same mystery being celebrated, the same faith. The Orthodox and the Catholic Church are separated only by human obstacles at this point, not by the faith that we profess and the life that is ours in Christ through the sacraments. But in Ukraine, the greeting that believers speak to one another 
is in the Ukrainian language, Christos Voskres, which means in Ukrainian, Christ is risen. And I'm going to test this out. I will see if it works. This is what it sounds like. Did you kind of hear that? A little bit. Let, let me try it again. Christos voskres. Christos voskres. Okay. Christos voskres. And in a moment, I'm going to greet you with that greeting in, in, in solidarity with our Ukrainian brothers and sisters who are suffering, unspeakable suffering, so unjustly. But the response is <clears throat> in Ukrainian, Voistino Voskres. Indeed, he has risen. So, Vo, and then like the word East, and then In, and then No. Voistino Voskres. And it sounds like this. Voistino. Okay. So I'd like to end the homily um, by greeting you with this most beautiful greeting of joy. Christ has risen. Indeed, he has risen. And we'll do it three times because we need the practice. Okay? But remember, your response is Vo east in no vos cres, vos cres, okay? Christos vos cres, vo east no vos cres. Christos vos cres, vo east no vos cres. Christos vos cres, vo east no vos cres. Amen. Name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, through the Paschal mystery of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have been buried with Christ in our baptism, so that now we may walk by baptismal grace with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, and we give thanks to the Lord for the graces that observance has brought to us, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. So I will ask you six questions, the answer to which is very obvious. It's I do, but I would ask you to say it with, with great feeling, with great sincerity, and with great joy. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now it is my privilege to sprinkle you with blessed water as a reminder of your baptism.
that the darkness has been overcome by our risen Lord, Christ Jesus. Let us turn to our Heavenly Father and as his priests present to him our needs and those of the whole world. Our response is grant our prayer, O Lord, that the church may always find her strength and hope in the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, that those freed from the darkness of sin by holy baptism may walk always as children of the light. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, for an end to war and the suffering it causes, that the peace which radiates from the risen Christ will reign in every human heart. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, that those who suffer will experience in their bodies the victory of Christ's empty tomb. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For faithful marriages and an abundance of vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the sick among our family and friends, that the Lord may bless and protect them from every evil, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all our beloved dead, especially Robert Daniel, that Christ, the Good Shepherd, may lead them safely home to be at peace with God, our Father. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord, and for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord this glorious Easter day. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Loving Father, Christ your Son has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. May all the world rise with him from the death of sin and come to sing his praises forever in heaven through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. There are two collections this morning. The first collection is our normal Sunday offertory. The second collection is the Holy Day collection, the opportunity to give uh, an additional gift to the parish that we may continue the, the work that Jesus has entrusted to our care. Thank you, as always, for your generosity. Our preparation hymn is number 599, Be Joyful Mary, Heavenly Queen. That's number 599. Okay, uh, Mark, you want to join me? Just follow me.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And this Mass is being offered for the intentions of the entire parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, Hugh, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service 
that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, 
and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. We saw this at Katamundi, Mr. Renanobis. On you stay, we saw this at Katamundi, Mr. Renanobis. On you stay, we saw this at Katamundi. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord, amen. There is so much to be thankful for on this glorious day in which the Lord has renewed our faith in him, increased hope and love in our hearts that we may be that much uh, more effective as his vessels, his instruments uh, of, of love and peace, his peace in the world. We keep in mind very much our suffering brothers and sisters throughout the world, indeed all those who are suffering whatever their faith at the hands of evil, the evil that is done by men. That the Lord may bring a conversion of heart through the ministry of good people, of Christians and others of, of goodwill. And we pray that we may have the strength never to turn our backs on the suffering world around us, for Jesus tells us that they are our neighbors for whom we must have a concern and for whom we will do what we can as God gives us the strength to do it. I'm so grateful for your faith that has brought you here today, that brings you here uh, every Sunday when we celebrate the same mysteries of the Lord's death and resurrection and are strengthened in the life of the Holy Spirit. I want to thank in a special way our liturgical ministers, first of all our music ministers under the direction of Jennifer Goltz, our music director. They so beautifully add to our worship and help us to praise God that much more. Thank you for your wonderful efforts. They were also at last night's liturgy. I saw a few of you we're also at last night's liturgy. 
Uh, God bless you. We had three young ladies who came into the church, baptized, and how wonderful. The whole service, however, lasted two and a half hours, okay? Now go to a, a black Baptist church on any Sunday, and they'll say, only two and a half hours? <laughs> anyway, so um, we thank God for our music ministers, always for our servers. It's wonderful to have the full complement back. Uh, for our adult acolytes, uh, Mike Hayes, for our lector, uh, Barbara, uh, who uh, has a special love for Ukraine. And um, so the Lord calls us into community for the sake of building community, not just any community, a community based on his truth, his love, his mercy, that every day we receive and that we put, praise God, to good use for the world. I wish you, your loved ones, your family members, yes, even your enemies, a blessed day. Easter. The Lord be with you. With you. One, one more announcement. I forgot, sorry. There are books at the, uh, the entrances of the church. It's the parish's Easter gift to you. It's a book called The Art of Living. It's about the virtues that we need to develop, the graces given to us in order to develop in our lives. Edward Sree is the, the author he writes, I think, in a way that's very approachable to most of us. So please take home a copy of that book for your Easter season reading. And next Sunday at 3.30 p.m., we will have the Divine Mercy Chaplet prayed here at 3.30 p.m. We're, we're moving it from 3 o'clock in order to accommodate, and we're happy to do it, the deaf community who worships with us until their, their place is restored. So 3.30 tomorrow, uh, next Sunday, divine mercy. Now, let's do it again. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten, endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. season is number 602, Regina Chaley. That's number 602. <laughs> Christ the Lord is risen today. That's number 596. <laughs> 